I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. Yeah. All right, everybody, here's their interview of the week today. And in this era of pandemics and these things, you know, what's going on in the world, I thought it would be appropriate to have an actual MD in the in the podcast today. And today, joining us from beautiful St. Louis, it's Dr. Tom Davis. Uh, Tom, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on, Robert. And yes, St. Louis is beautiful this time of year. If uh, the weather was like this uh, all year round, we'd be hip deep in billionaires and movie stars. Oh man, I, I you know talking about St. Louis, I heard that this time of the year they turn off the the Gateway Arch because of some migration of some birds. That was very uh, interesting. I, I I read it on the news this morning. You'd be surprised how many people that live in St. Louis have never been up to the top of the arch. Highly recommended. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, and you know, you know, segueing into something else, the engineering of that elevator, it's it's something something else it, because it, I I heard it has more in common with uh, Ferris wheel than with an actual elevator the way it's constructed. Yeah, it's amazing. They have a classic film that runs in the visitor center down, which is a world class visitor center, and uh, uh, it's just amazing to see how it was done. I remember as a little kid driving in and watching them put the last piece on. Uh, my my parents took me. It was a while. And maybe that's telling you exactly how old I am. Um, <laughs> if you're claustrophobic, don't go though, because the pods there are uh, yeah. are that take you up to the top are kind of small. Yeah, I've been there. I was there once a couple of years ago, and everything was under construction. So I'm looking forward to going back and actually, you know, seeing it uh, normally. Well, but let, let's get into the subject at hand. You are, uh, of course, a doctor, but you're also an RVer. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that and how you practice medicine from the road? Well, I've, uh, my wife and I have been uh, uh, part-time in now for uh, about five years, uh, increasingly spilling into full-time. The, uh, the, the pandemic and isolation kind of pushed us back to our home base. Uh, but uh, we drive everywhere, we, everywhere in the lower 48, uh, Canada, uh, Alaska. And uh, one of the things that I do is I um, teach clinicians how to be location independent in their practice of medicine using these telemedicine service platforms that uh, have been around and they've been around for gosh five seven years it's only been you know during the pandemic that people have become aware of them but they've been around for years and uh, i help clinicians get through uh, uh, burnout and and career transitions and one of the great destinations or one of the great tools is helping them become location independent, helping them become uh, RVers while practicing medicine. And, and and they can earn almost as much as they can earn in the office, but uh, without the fluorescent lights. And uh, uh, it, it, I decided that I needed to live the life to, to demonstrate that life for those clinicians, to let them know how, uh, how much fun it was. And Robert, uh, I, you know, you never should take your own stuff because I, I act, I've gotten hooked on it. And, uh, uh, every year we've been RV and more and more and, uh, enjoying it, uh, a great deal. And let me ask you, how does it really work? Is, is it something simple like, like a Skype or a zoom call or, or do you have to use a proprietary, proprietary software? I'm, I'm, I'm calling, I'm talking from, from the consumer end, like, if... so, well, the consumer's got a lot of choices. Uh, most of us now have a telemedicine benefit of some sort associated with our insurance policy. You just don't see it because it's kind of lost in all the documents that you get it. But there are also commercial ones out there that you can just buy without uh, without having any insurance coverage at all. And you can pay $45 or $90 or whatever it is to have either a video or an audio encounter with a, with a clinician. And they're tremendously handy. And on the, on the backside for the physician, and usually uh, what I do is I spend a couple of mornings, uh, a couple hours in the morning, a couple hours in the evening in a private place uh, with my computer uh, logged into the Internet. And I basically just perform encounters for the patients that need them. And uh, it's it's a wonderful gig for me as a clinician because it's very low stress and it makes me able to focus on the patient. But for the patients, it's incredibly convenient and uh, and they really get a lot out of it. And, you know, Robert, about six weeks ago, about two thirds of the entire healthcare delivery system in the United States went online in about five days. And the dislocation there was tremendous. And uh, 
Uh, you know, I just sat here in my little home and uh, took care of uh, more patients in a weekend than I would usually take care of in a month in the office. Yeah, no, I can imagine. Yeah, even my mom. She's yesterday. She, she was asking me because you know she's she's elderly. She's in her eighties, and uh, she was having they they, they had the whatever provider she has has a, like a proprietary app, and she had to like download it, and and it was kind of difficult for her. Is is it proprietary for in most cases, or because of regulation, or you can use uh, whatever you want? Can it be like a regular phone call? Well, before COVID, uh, the privacy regulations were very stringent. And so it, you really either had to ha go through a, a, a vendor uh, who could guarantee that they were compliant, or you did it like I do through these telemedicine service providers that have their own platform. It's important to understand now that the vast majority of telemedicine that's going on now uh, between a patient and their physician is really just kind of uh, put together with the uh, with, uh, uh, spit and mud, and uh, uh, everyone is really struggling how to get through it. If you if you were to use a telemedicine visit today uh, with your primary care doctor or, or whatever, the experience that experience would be a lot different than if you went with a uh, one of these uh, telemedicine service providers that's been around for years that have kind of smoothed out the process. Yeah, it's like everything practice does make perfect in mm -hmm. the end. And to what extent can you help a patient with telemedicine? You know, it would, it would be something like a cough. Can you tell by, by looking at a, at a video? Uh, to, what, to what extent can you practice? Is it it's limited in, in many ways? Well, the short answer to that, Robert, is to a limited extent. Uh, it's very important for the healthcare consumer to understand that uh, although you know a telemedicine visit seems like uh, a doctor's visit and and if you get somebody that you don't know they can seem like your doctor uh but it isn't an office visit and the person is probably not your doctor unless you've made that decision intentionally as a clinician we are taught to go into the examination room and take the whole patient in their entire body language uh their entire appearance looking for, for different movements. The examination by touch is very important. Even the examination by smell. And uh, it's smell is equally important to the patient, okay? When I walk in to see you in the examination room uh, and you take a whiff of me, you can be reasonably assured that I'm not intoxicated, reasonably, okay? Mm -hmm. But over telemedicine, you don't have any of those cues to tell you whether or not I'm impaired. OK, so uh, it, it, that that lack of communication, that nonverbal communication goes both ways. So my recommendation to patients who are using this is to listen to yourself. Do not get overwhelmed by the credentials or the process. If something doesn't feel right about your telemedicine visit, no matter what you're reaching out for, then it's not. And then you need to go seek somebody in person. That's the, that's how I would approach it. Yeah, I imagine it's basically a first step before actually going in person to, to, to an actual you know consultation on that. Do you foresee a future where, well, you know, as technology advances, where we'll be able to do more? Like, uh, you know, we all have a fit fitness tracker these days. Do you foresee a future that, with augmented reality, you may be able to. Especially maybe for a, for a, like a, by, by your expression, <laughs> I'm guessing no. But maybe a chronic patient that is already wired because they have a, a problem. Would you be able to foresee a future? Let's say 10, 20 years in the future. Well, you know, it's a tricky question. You got to answer it from two ways. First of all, the the people who deliver healthcare, which is mostly the health systems, you know, they're designed to generate revenue from your from your personal presence in the exam room, and they do that in any number of ways. So they're going to have to learn how to generate the same or maybe more amount of revenue by doing things without you being physically present. So, so you know, if you ask me if I see foresee a future, that there's going to be a delay in the future while these health systems are very good at taking money out of your pocket, as you well know, um, uh, figure out how to do that. Uh, but the other issue is, is that some information is good, but more information is not necessarily better. Because the more that you have done to you, uh, especially as you get older, the greater your chances of having something bad happen to you because I did something to you. I mean, I, my old professor once told me that whenever I would go up on the nursing home ward uh, to remember that you are basically an enormous Godzilla 
Anything that you do, even if it's accidental, is more than likely uh, to wreak havoc than it is to be of benefit. So you got to walk very cautiously. And that is wisdom that I've taken to heart uh, during my entire clinical career. I've done way more good taking away treatments and, and de-escalating things than I ever have adding things on short of childbirth and emergencies and, and those sorts of things. Uh, so it, uh, it, it really is, uh, it's important to understand that all these uh, remote stuff that people are making a lot of money off of them, uh, but there's really very little evidence that they improve uh, outcomes in ways that are meaningful to the patient. So probably what's going to happen is, is that your point of care for your primary care doctor is going to be through telemedicine. You're probably going to have to run through an artificial intelligence machine that will help guide you to self-care. And then you'll get to a nurse screener and then you'll get to a nurse practitioner and then you'll get to a, 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 a physician um, based on, on your needs. And that's probably the design that people are, are, are going to be seeing, but it's also probably going to take five to 10 years to get there. All right. Let's say uh, you know I'm 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 actually that guy who never goes to the doctor unless he's dying. <laughs> so uh, let's That's say probably if, pretty smart. Let, let me tell you, you were you were saying that, that, that sometimes it is better to take things away, and you'd be amazed. You know, like uh, like if you have a little high cholesterol, they already put put you on a pill and things like that. And I and that, I'm I'm kind of an advocate uh, the, the, for that being the last resort. That that's my mm -hmm. the way I think. You know, maybe I'll start eating healthier or exercising or doing something to avoid putting something into my body that may have a, a secondary effect, undesirable. But uh, it, it always it always pays to be a cautious consumer. There's a lot of financial mm -hmm. incentives behind the scenes that uh, that yes. patients are 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 no one don't know about. From uh, from an RVer standpoint, though, this telemedicine is fabulous because it allows you to become location independent and really know upfront how much money you're going to spend on getting your health care. I mean, one of the big things, you know, if you're really sick in the middle of Kansas and your home base is Miami, you really, I mean, you go to the ER and you're hoping that your insurance pays and you're hoping that you don't get stuck, but you really don't know until about six to nine months later when all the bills come in. Uh, with telemedicine, you know upfront exactly how much it's going to cost, and you also know upfront um, uh, what the level of care is that you're going to get, what what you're going to um, uh, what you're going to receive, um, and it, it really is a great deal for those of us who are location independent, uh, both for for providers but also for our viewers. Uh, at, Almost always when my wife lets slip that I'm a family doctor and I got licenses in a number of states, um, usually uh, uh, there's no shortage of people coming around asking me about little th <laughs> things in the RV park mm -hmm. or the campground. And so uh, that just shows you how much pent up demand there is if only there was some way to service these patients safely and to everybody's benefit. And I, I, I urge you know my fellow RVers, because I'm one of you, to uh, go check out your insurance plans and 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 take down the number that telemedicine service so it's right there at your fingertips, you know, when you're out on the road and you need it. Yeah, and and you would say most uh, major providers will have a, a, a will cover uh, telemedicine. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't imagine that there's a major insurance. Certainly, uh, nothing that you buy through the exchange that that doesn't have that benefit. Okay. How about the uninsured? Is is this relatively affordable to to get like a quick consultation with with, with you or some somebody else? Well, it's less expensive than going in to be seen in person. Um, for people who don't have insurance, uh, it's a godsend, and the reason is is that allows you access to a healthcare uh, professional uh, for a known amount of money. And uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'm not going to be able to help. I'm not going to be able to. I shouldn't say I can't help you. I'm not going to be able to treat you over the phone safely or over the video safely. Yeah. And I'll tell you, uh, but you know, I'm not going to say just dismiss you and send you to the uh, urgent care or the ER unless you know it's a true emergency. I I'm going to explain to you what the story is, what the options are, why I think you need to be seen in person, et cetera, et cetera. So you 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 really get some some uh, expert opinion from a human being as opposed to Dr. Google. And if you're uninsured and you know that, you know, uh, I'm going to get this in exchange for 45 bucks, well, you're much more likely to get a medical opinion than wandering in an ER and having no idea how much you're going to be on the hook for one year later. Oh, yeah. It's madness. Nobody buys stuff like that.
I've been there, and when once you walk into that into that uh, uh, urgent care, you have no idea how what it, it starts adding up, you know, really quick. Um, mm -hmm, absolutely. Let me ask you from a, a, a switching gears here, uh, since uh, of course for this you probably rely on the internet pretty heavily. And, and this is a question that I ask pretty much every RVer. What do you use for internet out there uh, the, 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 that you find uh, to be reliable pretty much anywhere? Well, uh, we toy, first of all, my wife is the wrench. So I, I have no, I have no, when I talk gear, I have no idea what I'm talking about. In fact, I think right now she's out there replacing our water tank. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> um, so uh, so I, I, we had a, um, a, a system that we bought that supposedly was better than the uh, than the hotspot that we have on our phones. And we have never, ever been able to make it work satisfactory. And to be honest with you, the hotspot on our phone uh, works fantastic. Every once in a while, at the end of the month, I have to buy an extra data pack uh, mm -hmm. because I use it a lot with the, with the telemedicine because I have a lot of video visits that uses up a lot of bandwidth. But uh, honestly, uh, many of the campgrounds that we stay at uh, for the longer terms have secure Wi-Fi uh, that, that's uh, you know, privacy compliant that I can use for private network. And uh, uh, it, works out, it works out nice. Uh, I just use the hotspot. Yeah. The only problem with those uh, campground Wi-Fi is that sometimes the, the speed is not there. You know, when the entire campground is watching a movie on Netflix, <laughs> you ain't going to be able to use it. You're absolutely right, and it's very frustrating when you're in the middle of an encounter and uh, and suddenly the bandwidth drops because someone's decided to download Bambi or or whatever. Mm -hmm. Also, when it rains, when it rains, that it also slows down because everybody's inside using their uh, using their wireless. Mm -hmm. um, all right, uh, Dr. Davis. Uh, now you wrote. Uh, I, I, I saw that you wrote two books. You have one on um, Medicare Advantage, and more recently one called Telemedicine Confidential: Keeping Your Family Safe. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it, and then where can people um, get those? If and, and who is it for, uh, basically? They're they're uh, both uh, available through Amazon, uh, and uh, uh, the telemedicine book is called Telemedicine Confidential: Keeping Your Family Safe. And I, I wrote that a couple of years ago uh, to help folks understand exactly how they can keep themselves safe uh, with these telemedicine encounters because they're they were being marketed as something that they might not be, and that is kind of gone on steroids since the encounter. And, uh, you know, I, I, there's a summary at the back that basically tells you what you need to do to, to make sure that you have a, a safe and effective encounter. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's there for patients to read. And I really couched it in terms of a, of a tale. It's actually a, a fictional book with the lessons in there. So uh, it's made to be readable. Um, and uh, it, it's a tool out there, and it's designed for your patient, for patients and my fellow RVers to take advantage of, because uh, telemedicine is going to become more prominent, not less. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely, and uh, it, it looks like like the current situation with the with the social distancing and and all that until we get a vaccine, it looks like it's going to be here for a while. So, uh, in some yeah, shape or form. We're getting we're getting stir crazy here. We're getting ready to go out. I, I really don't care. We're gonna hit some BLM land or something. Oh. But uh, we're we're gonna get we're gonna get out and camp. Doc, you're not the only one, right? I, I, Florida is taking reservations after the 16th of May, and I already made a reservation uh -huh. in late May. And uh, I'm just and I'm, and I'm in Miami. I'm in a hot area, but I'm just, I I just, I need to do it. <laughs> uh, absolutely, Florida has some of the best state parks that there are. Yeah, uh, you know the key uh, the key Robert for the telemedicine and for all, all these other services is to make sure you understand how much it costs you up front because most of the uh, insurance ones are free and uh, the ones that you pay for you can find very easily uh, on the internet. And there are ton. There are a number of insurance products that are popping up specifically for RVers who are location independent. Um, you know, they're the, they're not things that you can buy on healthcare.gov, but they do provide ex exceptional coverage, and they usually come in at about forty percent of what um, uh, of what people would pay. And these these are fantastic. Uh, uh, these are fantastic opportunities for our viewers. I, I actually consult with one of these companies, and the first thing I thought of is, man, I mean, healthcare.gov insurance, you got to stay by your home base if you want regular care, and this you can get anywhere in the country. So, um, you know, as for our viewers, especially as health insurance gets more expensive, start paying attention to some of these alternatives out there. Uh, if you're not on Medicare, they can give you tremendous coverage for a fraction of the price and really be very much tailored to people who are location independent. 
Yeah. Well, if you could share links to some of that uh, with sure. us, I'll, I'll put them in the show notes and in the in the video description as well. Uh, Great. For, because we were simulcasting on YouTube and uh, and on the podcast uh, this week. And um, well, t- uh, Dr. Davis, uh, any any final thoughts? Uh, any if if people wanted wanted to reach you, uh, do you have a direct uh, link uh, for consultations or anything like that? Well, uh, again, I do all my medical practice through these telemedicine service providers. But if you need a, a telemedicine question, anything like that, you can contact me uh, through my LinkedIn page. I'm Thomas Davis, MD, or you can go to TomDavisConsulting.com. But I warn you, if I'm not doing telemedicine, I'm out, I'm out uh, hiking with my wife and uh, two golden retrievers in some spectacular location. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so you, uh, you, you give me a call, and I'll get back to you as soon as I, I'm done relaxing. Absolutely, and and hopefully we'll we'll see you back in the Florida Keys uh, next uh, next winter, man. You uh, bet, you yeah. bet. That that's the healthiest thing: being out there in nature, and and uh, I think, in my opinion, the, you know, being it, at least for my mental health is what keeps me sane and and, and healthy. I Absolutely, exercise and fresh air is the best medicine. Thank you, thank you, uh, Doctor Tom Davis, for being on the podcast. I really appreciate you you talking to us uh, this week. It's been a privilege. I'll see you all on the road. All right. See you on the road.